It's amazing to see you all here. Uh, like, like it's been said, uh, the event has grown, it's doubled in size, so has a bunch of other things, and I'll, I'll get to talking a little bit about that. First of all, my name is Frederick. People usually call me Fred. I'm the CTO of Parity. Uh, I have this uh, like working on Substrate, and I'm like arguably, uh, you know, questionably a dev, but uh, <laughs> I still wear it. I still work on Substrate to some degree. Uh, so um, if you want to talk about anything Substrate, feel, please feel free to approach me. I'll be around both today and tomorrow, and happy to talk about anything. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about an overview and just kind of run down what Substrate is, what we've been working on, and a little bit of where we want to be going. So uh, kind of a short update since last time. We have about 117 contributors on the Substrate repository. But the Substrate repository is just a small part of what we're actually trying to do here. And I'll, I'll, that's sort of what I'm talking about today. You'll see how much more there is. Um, but about 60 of those are Parity employees. So it really means that like half of all contributors are um, Parity employees. The other half is you guys here um, and the community. Uh, there are many more repos. Like I said, there's the WASMI repo, which is super popular interpreter for WASM. Uh, you know, we have uh, like libraries across the board for everything that you can do in, in the blockchain world. Um, and uh, if you count all those things as well, it, it, the contributor number shoots up quite a lot more. But last year we released 1.0 around, around Sub-Zero last year. Around Sub-Zero this year, uh, we're going to be releasing a 2.0. And there's obviously gone in a ton of work, as you saw in the video, just over the past year. Uh, and ton of changes. I'm super excited for everyone here to, to be able to upgrade to 2.0, to build on 2.0. There's a lot of good stuff coming out of that. The dev hub, or substrate.dev, has massively improved over the past year. Again, in much thanks to Sean and, and his crew. Um, it is easier than ever to build on substrate. So the dev hub has tutorials, there's recipes for what you can do, uh, that just the, the raw sort of documentation of how features work, what they are, how to use them, has super, you know, it, it is super much better than last year. And, and I think it's, it shows. It, uh, in the amount of people that are building on Substrate and the amount of like support requests and everything that we're getting, it really shows that this is working and um, it's, it's so much better. Um, and yeah, contributors uh, as well as teams that are building on Substrate, so again, you guys here and, and people are across the world, uh, have more than doubled last year. So we're a community that sort of doubles year over year, which is amazing, and I hope we can keep that going. So what is Substrate? Um, I had a slide, other slide here before, but... Um, I think I remember it. <laughs> so um, I actually wanted the, the slide that's missing here is talking about um, why anyone would use Substrate in the first place. So before digging into what Substrate is, why would you want to use Substrate? So Substrate, you know, if you're building a layer one protocol, it's obvious that you should use Substrate to do so. Um, I think this is the case that we've been pitching for a long time and and kind of explains itself. But there's also, like, if you're building a P2P network that needs some sort of state machine, uh, whether that, that's, you know, some off-chain component like Rollup, or if it's, um, you know, a, kind of a relay network that you're trying to run that needs some internal consistency or consensus, um, all of these things that aren't necessarily like blockchains, but it still makes sense to build them in this fashion, Substrate makes sense for that. If you're a researcher that's, you know, working on a new consensus algorithm or are trying to, to do something new and innovative, um, Substrate is the perfect, like, base layer test bed that you can put your research into. And um, if you're like a programming language theorist and you want to experiment with making the best smart contract language, again, Substrate is the perfect test bed for this. So we really hope that it's not just for people who want to build layer one protocols, but if you're building like a really complicated decentralized application that's trying to you know, utilize a peer-to-peer -peer network in some unique fashion, basically if you're trying to do anything innovative at all in the blockchain space, Substrate is the place to be. 
So what is substrate then? Well, this graph, I think a lot of people have seen in various talks. I've added one thing to this, which is off-chain workers, and I'll get to that a little bit, but um, there's RPCs, there, there's networking, you get consensus, you get database, and like we've, we've been through all of these things. We know that this is roughly what you get with substrate. But really, you know, this picture doesn't really tell the whole story, right? So uh, let's expand it a little bit. And if we're talking about networking, we have to talk about libp2p. Libp2p is a massive library. It, it has a ton of different components, and this is something that is constantly being built out as well. If we're talking about consensus, you know, which Substrate today ships by default with Babe and Grandpa, but we actually have proof of work in there. We have proof of authority with Aura. We're adding more and more stuff to the consensus layer all the time. With off-chain workers, this is a new thing that lets you reach outside of the blockchain and into the real world. We think this is something super exciting that people will be doing really cool things with. Um, but off-chain workers is not just one thing. Uh, it has its own modules as well. So we've built an HTTP module to be able to do HTTP requests from a chain. Uh, we've built in a timestamp module to be able to deal with timestamps. Um, it's something that's requested very often when you're trying to do a blockchain application. But we're also building this out to do more complicated things like oracles. So it really should be super simple to do any off-chain activity uh, by using the off-chain workers in one of its modules. So this is something that we're looking to add a lot of stuff to as well. On the execution environment side, we've always had WASMI, an interpreter for WASM. But uh, we've recently started adding WASM time, and we're, we will be adding support for Lightbeam, our own sort of streaming compiler. And um, you know, this lets us do much more complicated things. An interpreter is kind of slow, uh, so going to you know, compile the WASM to native code makes that a lot better. So really, these are like core fundamental improvements to make Substrate even better. But we haven't really talked about the runtime here. Um, so as we all know, the runtime is where you add your logic that is specific to your chain. And we've um, obviously done a lot on the runtime side as well. I mean, both for Polkadot, for what we're building ourselves, but for what the community is asking for as well. So over time, um, we've added more and more runtime modules. And uh, last year, when uh, we were talking sub Zero last year, we had about 15 runtime modules. Today we have about 34 runtime modules. And these are pieces of logic, pieces of code that you can use that, that compose reasonably well together, that you can use to build your own chain just by picking the ones you want, or you can just use them as a reference. Uh, so we now have a massive amount of reference code to look at if you want to build a module yourself. And. Uh, I've been told that this also looks like a plumbus, so that's, uh, I guess, basically what uh, what we're building here, <laughs> and it might uh, it might be as com as complicated as a plumbus as well, plumbus, and uh, so it's sort of uh, a lot of what we're saying and how parody names uh, things is kind of like the story of. For those who don't know, plumbus is like a Rick and Morty thing, but uh, you know, in the in the sort of plumbus sketch, he goes like, oh yeah, and then you cut the schleim, and then you you have to you know, rub the fleeb and uh, you know, uh, somewhat unfortunately we might uh, be in a situation like that with Substrate where we're kind of inventing a lot of new terms. Uh, but hopefully this sort of settles down and it makes sense eventually. <laughs> anyway, runtime modules, super expanding super quickly, but really this is still not like everything that we're doing, right? So the, the, the main thing here, um, the core, this little inner circle, the right-hand side, is uh, we used to call it substrate core, now it's substrate client. But this is like the absolute fundamental fundamentals of the chain itself, um, where we're you know trying to make something that is useful for everyone. The runtime modules is something that's useful for any particular chain, but it might like every runtime module is maybe not useful for every chain. But uh, we still ship that, uh, maybe not all runtime modules, but some subset of them in what we call substrate node. So making it super easy to just deploy sort of a basic default chain. But um, this is more accurately describing what we at Parity are doing. So there are substrates, 
but there's also substrate like as in everything that comes along with it. So if we just go um, around the circle here, uh, something that I'm very excited about and I think people in this room should be excited about is the substrate playground. So playground.substrate.dev, I believe it is up and running and working. Um, this, if you've played with the Rust playground, is a similar idea where you just kind of get a Docker image with everything running in it. You can experiment, you can just get up and running super quickly, you can share it with your friends. It makes you know, collaborating a lot easier, it makes experimenting a lot easier. Um, so we all know the painful setup times, like and I was saying for some of these workshops today, there's like a 30 minute setup time. The playground is in part to try to address that where you don't really have to do that anymore. But if we just look at the sort of the core side there, we're building CLIs to make interaction with the node easier. We're building an archive node to be able to pull out data from the node. Uh, we're building RPC shims. So if you, if you have some application already that knows how to talk like the Bitcoin protocol, or like the Bitcoin RPC methods, um, then we can make it look, like we can make a substrate node look like a Bitcoin node. Um, and with this comes RPC libraries. So this is something that Parity is working on with like Rust RPC libraries, but people in the community are working on libraries for Java, for Go, for C Sharp, for everything else as well. We're working on Inc, which is our Rust smart contract programming language and um, Super excited, there is a talk on that later, so I'm not gonna go to, into too much depth. You get Signer, which is um, a mobile app that does offline signing and that works with any substrate chain. It's open source code, like all of this is open source code, so you can also take it, modify it, make your own version of that for your chain. Uh, Polkadot.js provides a front end library, but also um, importantly provides uh, an API in JavaScript. So again, like a, a really solid, um, easy to use JavaScript API for interacting with a node. We have browser extensions, dashboards, we have a nominator and governance app uh, so that you know, interacting with the governance modules becomes really easy. We have validator deployment tools so that you can actually like, deploy validators and tell, tell your community for the chains that you're building that they can use these tools. We have a marketplace, so like I said, we've built a bunch of runtime modules, but the community's built a bunch of runtime modules as well. And we want to be able to highlight these modules in some way. We want to be able to show the world what you know, modules exist, not only built by Perry, but built by anyone. We have a bunch of testing tools. Um, this is something that we're really expanding on and we want to do much more on and a bunch of analytics tools to be able to get insights on what's going on, on on a live network, what's going on with you know one particular node, what's going on with uh, a runtime like benchmarking tools, etc. And all of these tools are of course usable for any substrate based chain. So when you're saying yeah, I want to build on substrate, you're not just getting this core part, you're, you're not just getting the core and the modules, you're getting the like all of this, you're getting all of the tooling, all of the, you know, um, stuff that comes along with it. And this is just what Parity is involved with. So <laughs> it, it goes bigger. <laughs> um, and I explicitly say Parity is involved with because we're not doing all of these things alone. Like I said, we have 117 contributors just on the little core parts and we have a bunch of contributors on all of these other things as well. So it's really not just Parity building these things, it's the whole community. But um, there are things that Parity is not at all involved with as well that's going on. And uh, this is something that I'm particularly excited about. So we have about 20 plus high quality runtime modules that we know of. Um, and again, this is why we want the marketplace because we want these to be discoverable. We want to be able to connect them. We want to be able to show like which ones will play well together and which ones won't. Um, and I think it's really important that this gets highlighted so it doesn't become like uh, a scenario where only Parity's modules are the ones you can use or are the ones that are important. Um, but otherwise, you know, in the community, they're build, there's a bunch of tooling going on as well, right? So we're building, or the community is building block explorers, front end libraries. I know there's a really high quality one for, for Vue if you don't like React. Um, there's Solidity to Wasm compilers if you already have a bunch of Solidity code that you want to be able to deploy on a substrate node. 
there's a bunch of companies working on high availability deployment so that you can run a validator node on like three different regions or in three different data centers and be able to basically make sure that you're not gonna, gonna, gonna go offline. There's remote signing um, stuff being built that's both on like a validator side as well as ledger apps and hardware wallets and signer is one of these things too, right? So basically ways to improve the security for your chain. There's uh, TE support if you wanna be able to run code in trusted execution environments like SDX. Um, people are working on payment channels. We have um, some of them in the house today that I met earlier. Um, and there's, this is still just a fraction of what's going on, right? So um, there's 41 teams that we know of that are building on Substrate and uh, kind of building their own chains on Substrate. Um, and 31 teams that we know of that are building tooling for Substrate, just trying to get into the ecosystem by building something that is useful to these 41 other teams. So it's really getting to be a massive community. Um, I had a slide here before with a bunch of logos and yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. It was basically just to make a shout out to everyone that's here because I, I assume like a lot of the logos were of people who are here today. So, um, you know, the, these things, the teams that are building this stuff, they're doing so on top of all this other stuff, right? They're, they're buying into this ecosystem. They're buying into this community and this tooling that already exists. And this is what we want to focus on at Parity, making this you know, an, an unquestionable choice that the only reasonable thing to do if you want to do anything innovative in, in blockchain is to build on Substrate. So what is Substrate? I've had this title, uh, the whole, all of these slides. It's an ecosystem. Woo um, no, really, it's, it's, it's a community, it's an ecosystem. It's not just one thing. It's not just a uh, blockchain building framework. It's not just this thing plus a tool or whatever else. It's an ecosystem. It's you know, people building together. Um, it's, it's a whole slew of different things that work well together. And um, this is really the, the point I want to get across in this talk is, uh, you know, Substrate wouldn't be what it is without the people here today. Um, but of course, Parity still plays a large role in this and we will continue to play a large role in this. We at Parity have very ambitious plans for what we want to build and what we want to do in, in Substrate world. Um, so shared protected runtime execution environments or SPREE uh, is something that we've talked about before. It's something that I'm personally very excited about. It means that um, you can have properly composable interoperability with APIs that you can trust, the APIs that you know will exist there. Uh, and uh, not only is this super powerful for if you're connecting to Polkadot, it's also super powerful for if you want to do things like Ethereum 2 style sharding uh, and a bunch of other things. We're building substrate to substrate bridges, so whether you connect to Polkadot or not, you're, you'll be able to bridge to other substrate chains. Um, we have a bridge parachain, so you can bridge to Polkadot if you don't want to buy a parachain slot. We have parathreads, which is sort of pay-as-you-go interoperability with the rest of the Polkadot network. We're building in-browser light clients, which is something I'm super duper excited about. I and mean, this is something that we've sort of always been keeping on the back burner a little bit and, and making sure that it's possible to build a substrate node completely to Wasm and deploy it in a browser. Um, and it's always been possible, but we haven't really like wrapped it up and uh, made something of it yet. But I think we're on the verge of starting to do that. And this allows you to have a MetaMask-like experience, but instead of trusting a centralized server, you're saying I'm, I'm actually properly connecting to the P2P network and verifying data that I receive. And I don't think that we're going to have a successful blockchain environment unless we have something like this. MetaMask is a corruption of the ideals of, of blockchain, and, um, but it's super, super successful because that's what people want. So we have to give people what they want, but in a way that works in a way that it stays true to the nature of what we're trying to do. 
we're also building some parachains ourselves. Um, we kind of go, we want the community to build everything, <laughs> but it's not reasonable to expect that the community does everything. And so we kind of go, well, what are the most important pieces that no one else seems to be doing? And then we build that ourselves. But we focus on the infrastructural parachains, um, things like storage, things like identity, uh, whatever else might be like fundamental building blocks that other parachains, that other dApps thing can then use um, to build their end products. And of course, you know, I didn't mention this at the start, but um, Parity has now grown to be a company of over 100 people, I think over 105 people. Uh, we have a massive amount of developers, a massive amount of resources. And obviously, as you, as you look at what we're building, it, you know, we're building a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, but that also means that we still have a ton of resources to allocate to just fundamental improvements, quality of life improvements in substrate core and the runtime modules and in libraries. Um, tons of tooling, you know, we're, we're just going to keep expanding on this front. Uh, we really want to make Substrate the easiest, the best place to be, um, where, you know, you, you can just expect that there is something there that serves your need for whatever you may want. Um, and if there is something that you want that doesn't exist yet, come talk to me and we'll see if we can make it happen. So the journey has really just started. Uh, we're at the very first couple of days of this, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, long journey. And um, even if there's been a ton of progress over the past two years, it's, it's really just the beginning. Uh, so thank you all here for, for um, joining us on this journey. Uh, it's been amazing so far. It's going to keep being amazing. And I hope to see twice as many of you next year. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, I will be fielding any questions that anyone might have. Oh, you yeah, have a mic there, okay. It doesn't have to be on the stuff I just talked about, any questions on anything, uh, parody or substrate or anything. Hopefully, can answer it. Yeah, hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I was wondering if, if is there some kind of roadmap that we, as a community, can look at what uh, what Parity is building and what others are building as well. All right, we got the logos up. <laughs> um, roadmap, not really. Um, so, as far as what Parity is building. Uh, you have some view into it with this presentation. Um, a, a public format of this kind of thing is pretty easy to make. It's something we can put up. Um, we've always kind of gone, we're not sure how valuable that is to anyone actually. Uh, but it is, it is a current problem, like discoverability is a current problem. Um, and we we're, we're well aware that discoverability is a problem. And that's like part of the marketplace is trying to push discoverability of things. Um, but discoverability in like what tools are we building, what's going on, um, when like, I, we, we can't really ever answer when something will happen because we don't know ourselves either, like we, we start working on something and when it's, it's done we know that it's done <laughs> uh, and not really before. But um, um, there's stuff that we can do on, um, on our side, but then for the for your greater point, the, what what is the community working on? This is something that actually I don't fully know either. Um, it would be great if someone in the community actually built some sort of resource for for listing what's going on. Um, and if such a thing was available, I would certainly put up everything that Parity is doing on the in that place as well. Um, but I don't know, I don't have a vision myself for what that would look like. And a newsletter was a suggestion, but I think it needs to be something more live. I don't know, maybe not, maybe a newsletter is good. Enough. But how, do, how would a community member contribute to the newsletter, like send in what they're working on? Yeah. Uh, hi, Frederick. Uh, can you tell more about uh, Marketplace? Is it uh, launched, is it uh, in uh, ideas, what is it? What is the status of it? It's in, um, 
being worked on stage, so further than idea, not super close to launch. <laughs> uh, so I'd say like, if idea is over here and, and launch is here, then somewhere in the middle, like 40, 50%. Hi, uh, I am Oleg. I would like to know how far are you with uh, TEE? So that's actually not a thing that Parity is involved in. It's the Substra T <laughs> team, and uh, uh, blanking on their company name, Supercomputer Systems, or something like that. Uh, um, yeah, they're speaking tomorrow on this topic. So go watch that talk. Oh, hi. Um, what about s maybe certification or educational kind of programs, uh, on-site training? I know like um, dev teams getting up to speed, you know, can be kind of inefficient. Um, improving that kind of on-ramping would be. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this goes into like ecosystem adoption, which is another whole area that, it, that Bjorn is responsible for and that I haven't really touched at all here. But we are doing a ton of stuff and we're, we have more ideas for what we want to do. Um, education is, is a big topic there, right? Uh, not only how do we directly educate teams that we know are working on this or even working with us, um, so we, we are doing a ton of workshops, we're doing a ton of just talks and seminars and, and things like that. But the next step is to have like an actual educational program, um, whether that results in a certification or not, I don't know, but um, education is absolutely on top of our mind. Um, you mentioned 2.0 being released now-ish. Uh, I, I don't know if it's actually been released. The last time I checked, it hadn't. Um, do you do we know like when that's uh, going to be done? I know you said we can't really say. And then the other question would be along the lines of: um, Do we would we anticipate future breaking versions in the near future, or should 2.0 be good to build upon, you know, for a decent amount of time? Or do you have any idea? Um, so yeah, this is a tricky question. Obviously, like 2.0 is released when it's ready. That's that's the state of it. Um, and um, if there will be more breaking changes, yes, there will be. <laughs> the timeline of when they will happen. So the, for sure, it won't be like moving from 1.0 to 2.0. So 1.0 was something that we said this is something you can build on. This provides you the basics. This gives you an experience of Substrate that is acceptable to work on. But then we obviously kept shipping a ton of stuff over the last year, and that all goes into 2.0. So I've seen most people actually try to work off master recently, because like it's you know, the, the features they want to just don't exist on 1.0. And uh, working off master is a horrible experience that I don't want anyone to actually have. Um, and I would hope that with future releases, it is more acceptable to actually stay on 2.0, to stay on that. Uh, I, my, my ideal sort of release model um, looks like what uh, Ruby on Rails is doing. So Ruby on Rails does have breaking changes regularly. Um, you know, going from Rails 1 to Rails, what is it now, 6, um, there has been, you know, regularly like, if it's every year or every other year, I can't actually remember their schedule, but they do break things. And they do so for good reason. But they also provide an upgrade path, usually, either through documentation or through automated tooling. And I think we can do the same thing. I think we can have it be slow enough that it's reasonable to build on one version and not have to be scared of like what is the next version going to break or when is that going to come around. Um, but it will get a. It will like take us some time to settle into what our release schedule is and how often or not we can break things. Um, I don't expect that we will ever go kind of like what the Go community has done and just say no, like we're always backwards compatible forever. Um, it's not really a goal we have, but break things um, in a way that it's easy to upgrade and kind of on a reasonable schedule, that's what we want. Uh, 
Hi, Frederick. Um, I want to ask about uh, releases and tags. Why in uh, substrate repositories there is no releases and, as you said before, uh, working on master is a terrible thing? Yeah, there will be. Uh, we're still starting to put that in now. Um, not only rele actual releases, but release management. Uh, putting everything on crates.io is a goal. Um, it's coming. Okay. Yeah. Is there an issue with it? Uh, it? It is uh, a person who's responsible for it. He's called Martin. You may be able to find him here. <laughs> but uh, it, no, there's not an issue. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly big task, but it's a uh, high priority in the company. It has, you know, focus in the company. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julio. Um, when you mentioned infrastructural part chains, you said something about identity. Are you, can you elaborate a bit more in that so, regard? And is it also a sovereign identity specifically? or? What? Uh, this is just an example. It's not something we're actually working on yet. Um, what we want to do is make sure that the that Polkadot and that the community has what is necessary, that the infrastructural pieces that we consider required exist. Um, and if someone in the community were to build an identity chain, then we wouldn't. Um, and um, so the, these are just examples of what I would, like I consider identity and storage and um, like some sort of DeFi to be like required pieces of an ecosystem. And um, it's it, we I can't like Parity isn't working on any specific thing right now, so um, I don't know details or like details don't exist. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, and I hope you have a good conference. <laughs>